Hello, 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 everybody. Thank you guys so much for joining us for today's episode of Heat Press Nation Live. Whether you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, it's a pleasure to have you. Uh, as you might have seen by the caption or by the post, uh, I'm pressing some cheap, keyword there, some cheap Christmas stockings. Today I'm going to be using Caesar Glitter, and I'm glad you guys were able to join me for this really fun project. Uh, before I get started, I do want to give a quick shout out to our Facebook group. That's the Heat Press Nation Creators Group, and if you want a shortcut there, I believe it's going to be on screen. Uh, uh, the, the, yes, got it right the first time. There it is heat.press slash FB group. You just type that into your URL, uh, into your browser, and that's gonna take you right to our Facebook group. Lots of really great, helpful, fun, awesome, rad, amazing people are in that group, and they have lots of answers to lots of questions. Like, I consider myself a pro at heat pressing, and even then there's still some stuff that like I just haven't, I, have, I, don't, I haven't pressed it yet. And rather than get it, you know, a guess for me, you can go to the group, and there's people who have actual experience pressing these really cool or unique items and they're, they're able to shed some light on that. So it's really cool, really great group. I highly recommend joining. Once again, it's the Heat Press Nation Creators Group and you can see it right there on your screen. Just type that in, heat.press slash FB group. If you're watching on, face, on YouTube, do me a favor, hit that like and subscribe button. And if you're not uh, yet a subscriber on YouTube, maybe you're watching on Facebook, head on over to our YouTube channel. It's youtube.com slash heat press nation or you can just search Heat Press Nation, we have lots of great content coming through there all the time. Tutorials, how-tos, uh, unboxings, lots of cool stuff. Our team, uh, shout out to Alex and the team, working really hard on getting great content for you guys. Okay, all that's out of the way, let's get started. Really quick, I mean, I don't know about you, like when I watch, when I listen to podcasts, I always skip like the first three minutes, but we gotta do it, we gotta do it. So today, I got some really cool from I can't say where I got them from, but it rhymes with Schmall Mart. All right, give you a little insight as to where I got these from. Uh, I've done these before. These are, they're like, they're fuzzy. I have no clue what these are made out of, but they're fuzzy and I ripped the price tag off already, but I saved it because I forgot what I was doing. $2, it's $1.98. And if you don't believe me, let me see if camera two can pick this up here. Does it show? I don't know if it's getting in focus, but yeah, $1.98 for these fuzzy ones, and then I've never pressed these ones before, so we're gonna give this a shot. These are 98 cents. These are the felt stockings from, again, can't say the name, because we don't promote other companies that we don't, aren't associated with, but uh, it rhymes with Schmallmart, and you can purchase these at your own risk. I'm just kind of showing you how I would do them, because it's, it's a fun craft, it's a fun project, uh, and, I, and maybe some of you guys are like, oh shoot, uh, my nephew, because this is what I'm doing them for, by the way. I have nine nephews and nieces, and they're all, we're, you know, buying gifts for nine kids um, that aren't even mine. <laughs> uh, it, it, you know, it's a lot some years, so all the uncles and aunts agree, like, hey, we're not going to get all the nephews and nieces, get, you know, if their parents want to get them gifts, whatever. We're just going to, like, put stuff in their stockings. So now it's my job to make, I have nine stockings to make, and, you know, I'm not going to get them, like, each the $20 stocking. These $2 or $1.98 stockings, they really come in handy. So it's a fun project. I'm just gonna show you how it's done. And then after this, after we clear the, the desk after this live, uh, I'm probably just gonna go, I, got, I gotta go back to Walmart, get nine more of these pups and then uh, <laughs> hook my nephews and nieces up. Really quick, wanna thank you all for joining me. Big shout out to everybody tuning in. I see all our friends here. Jesse Gibson, pals tuning in from West Virginia. And then we have all of our YouTube friends joining us today. Thank you guys so much. Priscilla Brooks is saying hello. And yeah, we're, we're getting ready to have a good time. If you guys have any questions about anything that I'm doing here, uh, please feel free to drop it in the comments. I'll be happy to go into more detail. So, and you see here, I have, a, I have one of these already prepped. Today's transfers, I cut them. And actually, let's show this to two when we get the shot. There we go. This is Caesar glitter, so it's kind of sparkly. It, it sparkles better um, when it doesn't have this little thing on there. But anyways, you see I already have mine prepped, so I'm gonna walk you through the process. So we have our, and let's go back to one here. We have these um, stockings. They come with, you wanna just make sure that if there's anything inside, just pull it out. I'll pick that up later. Um, and here's the thing. So this stocking, and we've tested this one before, this fuzzy, it actually holds up pretty decently in the heat press. Now what doesn't hold up 
is, and you're gonna wanna flip it inside out. This inside lining, it, it, it will, if you heat press it too long, it'll melt and uh, it'll scorch for sure and possibly even melt. So what I did was I put, and I'll talk about this right now. So what I did was I pulled it inside out and then I just put the stocking on kind of on the edge of the heat press. Now this is a piece of vapor apparel foam, uh, heat foam. It comes in a huge roll like this. And there's, there's more to this roll. I forget how long it's supposed to be. There's more to this roll, but uh, we, I chop up little pieces all the time. Um, if you ever need like a custom insert or uh, to fit something in, uh, that's awesome. It's very similar to a pressing pillow. And so what I did was I cut an insert and I made it the, the width uh, right here. It's gonna fit right inside. And you notice HPN Craft Pro. Oh, by the way, you're not seeing things. This is a mint colored HPN Craft Pro. I wanted the pink one, but I couldn't find it. Um, so yes, we have these available. All the HPN Craft Pros are now available in mint, like you see here, and pink in addition to the original color. So if you are wanting to get your special somebody, the crafter or the budding uh, entrepreneur in your life, a gift for Christmas, check out the pink and green. We have them in 13 by nine, 12 by 15 swing away. And like what you're seeing here, this is a 15 by 15 inch uh, HPN Craft Pro. It has the slide out lower platen, which is what you're seeing right here. And it's what I'm using today. Available now, mint and pink. Okay, so I've put this little piece of foam and what this does, oh, here's the reason why. So I'm gonna press right here. This seam is pretty thick. And what happens is since this is thicker than this, and also out here is thicker, um, these parts, we're not gonna use heavy pressure on this. So these parts are probably gonna make more contact with the heat press than this center part, which kind of dips in, you know? So by putting this piece of foam here that I cut uh, from the Vapor Apparel Foam Kit, again, it comes in a big roll, like you just saw. You're gonna put this in here and it's gonna allow this part to make contact with the heat press and this thick seam is just gonna kind of fall off. And I'm gonna center it because that's what you're supposed to do. And you, and I'm actually gonna pull it over just a little bit, just to make sure the heat press is gonna come down right about here. I wanna make sure that this makes full contact with my heat press. As I mentioned, to, this transfer is done with Caesar glitter. Caesar glitter, uh, it holds up really nice uh, on these stockings. And I really like it. What you don't want to do is use regular vinyl. Oh, that's what I wanted to mention. Caesar glitter is really thick, which is why it's going to work great on these on these stockings. If you use regular vinyl, this like furry like thing, like the regular vinyl is really thin and it just it looks terrible. We've tried it. Uh, not a good look for these stockings. So you want to use something thicker. I really like the way Caesar glitter looks on these. It's what I've used for all my stockings so far. Yeah, so I'm gonna place it, I'm gonna center it, and then I'm going to cover it with my pro-grade non-stick sheet. And this one, this one used to be for like, it used to be, this sheet used to be a lot bigger, but I cut it down uh, to fit some of my smaller projects. I'm just gonna cover it. We're gonna slide it in. Now, here's the cool thing about stockings. Since you're not gonna be washing them like a t-shirt, you're not gonna be washing them once a week and using them all the time, they're gonna get hung up on your mantle or wherever you hang your stockings and then that's it. You don't really need to wash them. So we're not gonna get a ton of pressure to smash the vinyl into the stocking. We're gonna give it just enough at a light pressure. And we're gonna give it just enough pressure and time. Now I am gonna leave my press, uh, cause these are glitter. You press it at 320 seconds for 10 to 15 seconds. I'm staying at the bottom end of the time. I'm only pressing for 10 seconds. So 10 seconds on the clock. I'm gonna slide this back in. I have everything ready to go and we're set. The only thing you didn't see me do today was uh, I did not cut anything live on camera. These were all uh, pre-cut, 10 seconds. There we go. Now you'll notice this is a very light pressure uh, and that's intentional because this, you know, it's like a synthetic material. It's very sensitive to scorching and press marks and all that. We're testing it out with a light pressure first. We're gonna see how that goes. And then if necessary, if you see any lifting on there, uh, then we'll, what we'll do is we'll just hit it again with a little bit more pressure. 
So we're going to carefully peel this away. And actually, that seems to have come out great. I'm going to show this off right now. I'm actually pretty proud of this. Now, it is going to look like it's sitting on top and ready to lift off, but that's just because uh, it's on the, uh, it's just, it's, it's like a towel. It's just kind of pilly. So check this out. Let me see how close I can get. Leonardo in sparkly glitter. And then what you can do is, oh, here's where you don't want to make a mistake. And I'm about to find out if I messed up or not. Oh no, I did it correctly. I've messed up on so many of these. So when you pull the, when you pull it back out, you want to make sure and double check, please double check. I've done it so many times where, <laughs> where I had the name upside down, but there we go. We pulled the stocking back out. Boom. Leonardo now has a custom, stocking and this is going to hang real nice on a fireplace and again you could use whatever um whatever stockings you like here so we'll get the pulled out shot right there now the name is because leonardo is kind of a long name um you know you could measure these you could get like a taller font if you want to you could really make the name stand out that is totally up to you and in fact if you want to keep your kids busy go to like defont.com d-a-f-o-n-t.com and just have them pick a font for their stocking dude you could be, I, I could, I'm on there like for hours, just like, oh, which stock, just scrolling through. Oh, what font should I use? So if you want to get your kids out of your hair for a little while, have them pick a font. And if they don't take enough time to say, are you sure you want that one? Let's try a different one. I don't know. Keep, keep the kids busy, right? And there we go. It's that easy. I love this project. It's really fun. Like I said, I have nine of these to do once we're off the air. Um, so now what we're going to try is we have all these. Oh, yeah. And again, these are, if you're just tuning in, we're making cheap Christmas stockings. This fuzzy one that I just did, $1.98. I don't know if you can see that from here. $1.98. These little felt ones that we're about to do, 98 cents. So if you're working, maybe you're working somewhere, you're at a business or you're volunteering, and you have to make a bunch of stockings uh, uh, custom and you don't want to break the bank. Maybe you're donating your time and your efforts. Um, these stockings are really cheap. Now, here we go. Here's a felt stocking. I haven't pressed these, these again, 98 cents. I haven't pressed these cheap ones yet. So you and me are about to find out together how this goes. I'm going to check in on the comments. If you guys have any questions about what we're doing today, please feel free to drop it in the comments. Oh, it's a good question. Akira is saying, what if you don't have the foam, what do you put? Um, if you don't have the foam, and you know what? I'm going to press this one without the foam. So let's try that. Be careful, the little red lenties get everywhere. Uh, in the past, I have pressed them without the foam. And the only thing that happened was um, it just kind of left like a little imprint on there. That's really it. Another thing, since there's no foam inside, I am going to have to increase the pressure a little bit. So let's see. And you, I'm not putting any HTV on right now. I'm just going to do a test press and see if this is enough pressure here. Uh, that actually should be pretty good. OK, so let's try it. Uh, let me see who's asking. Akira is asking, what if you don't have the foam? And we are going to test that out. We're going to see what happens if you don't have the foam. I have another transfer here. This one's for Raphael. By the way, you probably want to take a little bit more time centering your graphics than what I'm doing here. Mostly showing off the process here. So we have this uh, glitter transfer. We're going to put it on. We're going to cover that. I believe this is already in. There we go. 320 degrees, 10 seconds on the clock. Let's see how it works without the foam. I personally use the foam just to make sure that it's pressed just right. If you don't have the foam, it should actually work out just fine. There we go, 10 seconds on the clock. Slide this out a little bit. And we're gonna be just carefully peel at the edge to make sure it sticks. And it looks like it's sticking. There we go. Again, because these are not t-shirts, you don't really have to put too much pressure on it. I'm gonna go ahead and show that off right there. So no one's gonna be really washing. These aren't gonna go through the washer and through the dryer. Um, you know, look at that glitter. Really, really cool. Probably should have made the names a little bit bigger. 
yeah, so these aren't gonna be going through the washer, they're not gonna be going through the dryer. They're just gonna be hung up once a year. You know, probably they're hung up between, you know, what, a month out of the year. And uh, yeah. Or maybe your kid's boyfriend or girlfriend's coming over and you don't really like them. You're not sure if they're gonna be around for future holidays, you know, so you don't wanna spend too much on a really nice stocking. You, you know, you can get one of these discount ones until they, uh, until they've secured their position <laughs> on the mantle. <laughs> but you know, you don't want them to feel left out either. So you're gonna hook them up with a you know, custom stocking, a little $2 stocking. Yeah, so great question, Akira. That's, that's exactly how it turns out. If you don't have the foam again, uh, I do have the foam and I prefer to use it. Okay, let's check over here on Facebook. Let's see if we got any questions here. Uh, no questions, no worries. Or actually, you know, what, Facebook, I usually have to give it a second to catch up. I've noticed that with the um, with the comments. So, yeah, very cool. Thank you guys for joining me. If you're just tuning in, uh, we're doing, and this little red lint, I'm going to have to get a vacuum cleaner. That's, a, that's the only, like, downside to these cheapy. Again, uh, today, if you're just tuning in, we're pressing $2 stockings, discount stockings that I got from a store that rhymes with Schmall Mart. And uh, yeah, two dollars. We're about to press our ninety-eight cent uh, felt style stockings uh, in just a moment. Michelle Day, that's a great question. She's asking which press. This is the HPN Craft Pro Slide Out Lower Platen. Which honestly, if you guys want to know, and these little red little lenties are everywhere. This slide out lower plate makes pressing your uh, t-shirts and everything so much safer, easier, and faster. It's beautiful. This is the 15 inch by 15 inch model. It's also available in a smaller 13 inch by nine. You see this here? This is in the new mint finish. We also have it available in pink, which is the first for us. We have mint, pink, and the original, which is more of a white and blue, white and teal, I think it is, uh, finish. These are all available. This is, in, this is the 15 by 15. We have it available in 13 inches by nine inches, which is a little smaller. And then we have a swing away model, which is a 12 by 15 inch swing away, all three of those sizes are available in pink, green, and the original. So you definitely want to check that out over at heatpressnation.com. Okay, well, if you're still if you're still here with me, we're gonna press these 98 cent felt um, stockings, and we're gonna see how these press. So one thing I do want to do is I wanna I'm gonna I'm gonna use the foam pad again just because I've never pressed these, and I'm kind of curious to see how they'll turn out. And this, we have this, actually, I'll, sh I'll show you right here, sorry. So it has this little decoration, which is, it's thicker than the areas next to it. So if we heat press it, this might block, and again, we're not using a ton of pressure, so this might prevent this area right here from getting pressed properly. So I am gonna use my foam, and uh, let's see how this works. Now this one, there's no need to flip it inside out. Um, yeah, I don't know. There's like a lining. I think it's a lining inside. Oh, it says right here. What is this made out of? This is made out of... Nope, it doesn't say what it's made out of. No clue what this is. This is a mystery material here, but we're going to test it anyways because that's what we do at Heat Press Nation. And you can see this is not going to fit, so I'm just going to trim this. That's what I love also about this heat foam. You could trim it to size. There we go. So let's put this in here. Slide that out. I'm a little too close for comfort from the heat press. Yeah, I like saying it looks like cotton burlap, but it just, it feels a little funky. It might be cotton, but I'm not certain. So we're gonna call this our mystery material for now. We're gonna place it right there on the heat press. And again, we didn't flip the, the you know, the stocking is still you know in proper orientation. So this next one, Ooh, this one might be a little too wide. Do I have a shorter name? Yeah, I do. There we go. So this one is for Donatello, my buddy. He's green. There we go. So now we've placed our glitter transfer uh, on our really cheap 98 cent stocking and uh, we're gonna cover uh, for two things, it's always safe, but this mystery material, I have no idea if any of this is going to melt. I do not want this to melt and stick onto my heating element. That would be terrible. 
So you definitely want to have a little protection. If you have some parchment paper, you could use parchment paper. I have my pro-grade nonstick sheet that I cut down to size. We're going to slide this in and we're going to press it again, 320 degrees at 10 seconds. Uh, I feel like uh, that should be enough pressure. It does feel a little bit light, uh, but we're going to see how this turns out. I might need to repress. We'll see. But in any case, you don't need a ton of pressure for this stuff because this is not going through the wash. You don't really need to smash that, that glitter in. Oh, hey, check that out. Not bad. Let's see if it's stuck. Oh, yes, it did. Dude, I'm going to show you guys right now. Let's pull this. Oh, okay. I don't, I don't know if it melts. I don't think that melted. I'm looking at the inside right now. Sorry. Looks good to me. Check that out. Here we have a nice Donatello, a nice glitter on this 98 cent Christmas stocking. And I know you can also get these at other stores. We got this at the store name that rhymes with Schmall Mart. So, uh, it, yeah, we don't, I'm not a big fan of them, but uh, I did get this cool stocking. Dude, check that out. Really, really cool. And now these stockings, again, you could use them if you have a lot of stockings to make. Uh, maybe you're decorating uh something your well what's even still open now your store maybe depends on what uh county or state you're in uh but who knows who knows what you're decorating uh like i said earlier maybe you have like you know your kids bringing their girlfriend or boyfriend over for christmas and uh you don't want to waste money on a good stocking yet uh you can you know you can hold them off for this year uh with a 98 cent felt stocking or this dollar 98 uh fuzzy stocking these both work really great for Glitter. After, you know, my thoughts on this one, after pressing this felt stocking, you probably could get away with heat, with regular, like easy weed or just a regular heat transfer vinyl. Um, but for this fuzzy one, because of the fuzzy material, you're probably gonna wanna stick with glitter or something a little bit thicker. Uh, we've actually, I've done these in years past with regular heat transfer vinyl. It looks ugly, it gets all wrinkly and gross because it doesn't have a smooth flat surface to be on. Um, so you want to use something thicker like glitter. Uh, this last one, well, you guys have seen how it's done, so we're not going to do the last one. But if you guys have any questions about anything you've seen here today, about what we're doing, or just questions in general, uh, I'm going to be on for a couple minutes. Um, oh, that's a great question. Brandy's asking, can you press on the red part of the stocking? You totally can. And what the heck, just for fun. Now, oh, now here's the danger. And I have an extra transfer here, so I'm just going to put it I mean, $2 stock and I don't mind ruining it. Here's the danger about pressing the stockings, the red part. So these stockings are prone to uh, getting press marks. So they're kind of big. They don't like totally fit. I think I could squeeze the whole thing onto this 15 by 15 inch heat press. Uh, I'm trying to not have any edge stick out. If you leave an edge sticking out like this, oh, where are we? there we go. If this edge is sticking off, the heat press is going to come down right here and it's going to leave like a hard crease. Now it might actually, it'll probably get covered by the white part if we fold it over. So you know what? I'm going to put it right here and it actually should be okay because this white part's going to fold over and cover any nasty crease that we're about to get right there. So you totally compress the red part. I'm going to just put this transfer here just as an example. And uh, yeah, you could totally press the red part. And because it's the same material as the white part, even on like this stocking, uh, you totally can. And because this is what I do here, let's see it. Ooh, that pressure is a little firm. No big deal, should be just fine. We are at 320 degrees, 10 seconds. Oh, Jackie is saying, I just, oops, hold on. Jackie is saying that she just recently used Flock and loved it. Ooh, I gotta try Flock. I personally love using Caesar Strip Flock Pro. Moment of truth, this should be just fine. Yep. Ooh, that's hot. Yeah. No problemo. And as expected, you see that harsh crease right there. But the glitter worked just fine. And in fact, if we pull this white back over the crease, the crease or the little press mark that we left on our stocking is now hidden. And this is looking just dandy. I am a big fan. Yeah, so if you wanna 
this whole area is free to use if you guys want to put like a cool character or I don't know, some more decorations on your stockings, go for it. I'd love to see what you guys are working on. So if you do decide to do this project, uh, please comment pictures in our Facebook group. Again, that's the Heat Press Nation Creators Group. You just go to your, your browser, type in heat.press slash FB group and uh, request to join the group and you can post some cool pictures uh, of what you guys are doing with your stockings. Uh, Michelle is asking, what am I using inside of the stocking? Okay, I'm going to cover this one again. So this is Vapor Apparel Heat Foam, and it actually comes in a big roll like this, and I love it because I'm con constantly cutting, oh, as you can see right here, I'm constantly cutting like custom little pieces of it uh, to fit inside uh, different projects like this, um, like t-shirts, sweaters, sometimes, because we do sell the, the pillow kit. Sorry, I should roll this up here. We do sell a pillow kit, but sometimes they just don't, fit right for whatever reason and you need like a custom little insert um, for hat presses i always have this to fill to stuff the, the the crown of my structured caps so this stuff i highly recommend it uh, for all t-shirt shops it's good to have on hand it's not something you're going to be using every day um, but it really comes in handy when you need it uh, yes where can we get the phones from natalia is asking heatpressnation.com in fact you can go to heat.press slash foam kit, I believe. I'm gonna comment that link here. It takes me forever to type on this thing. You can go to heat.press slash foam kit, I believe. There we go, just commented that. Is the foam on the website? Yes, Gerardo, it totally is. Um, Yep, all the, everything you're seeing except for the stockings can be found on our website. So this uh, heat foam is on the website, the ProGrade non-stick sheet, Teflon uh, is what a lot of people know it by, um, and then of course this really cool Craft Pro, all available at heatpressnation.com. Um, really affordable prices. I highly recommend you check it out. Okay, any other questions that we got here? Oh yes, Natalia's asking, can we use those foams for sublimation too or just heat transfer vinyl? Sublimation all day long. Uh, in fact, I use it a lot for uh, sublimation masks. I'll just cut a little piece uh, and just have it on there so that way the masks can just get nice, even pressure uh, all over the whole thing. So I use it for masks and uh, t-shirts. For t-shirts, I'll usually use the pillow just because it has that it slides easy in. The pillows uh, that we sell, they have this material, um, but they're, they're, they're wrapped in it. So they slide in and out of the t-shirts super easy. You could use foam for t-shirts too, but just sliding in it is not that easy. That's why I do like the pillows for t-shirts and other garments. Great questions. Any other questions coming in over on YouTube? Cindy's asking, why did I flip the other ones inside out? Great question. The reason why I flipped them out was because if I would put it in, and let's go to, uh, oh, two. Let's get two back down. Sorry. Actually, really quick. So the reason... I put it in here, if I put it in just like this, what I didn't want was for the heat press to come down and leave a crease right here on the red part of the thing. So that's why uh, I flipped it inside out. And then I just left the rest of this kind of just hang off. Um, so that way it wouldn't leave a hard crease on my, um, on my stocking. If you can figure out a way to, to not flip it out and just press like that without getting that crease, by all means go for it. This is what's worked best for me, and so uh, I'm sticking to it. Let's see, any other question? Uh, yes, Yoshi's saying, great idea. This will likely work on Santa hats too. Do I only recommend the Glitter HTV? Great, great point. Yes, at the store, at Schmalmart, where I got all of these stockings, they also had the hat, the fuzzy hats, and the felt hats. So yeah, totally. If you want to make Santa hats, uh, you're doing it for, for a party or something, or you just want everybody to have, you know, it's, it sure is a heck of a lot cooler than a name tag. Uh, having everybody wear Santa hats. I know we're not partying in large gatherings, but whatever, do what you guys want. Um, uh, but yeah, it's a great, you could totally use it for the hats. Um, the reason why I use the glitter is because it's thicker, which is good for this fuzzy material. Now on these felt ones, you could totally use pretty much whatever vinyl uh, you want. It looks like it's going to hold up pretty good. 
Um, but for the fuzzy ones, you're gonna wanna use a thicker HTV. Uh, I personally happen to like glitter because it is thick, but it looks super, super cool. Um, but you could also use like strip flock. I wouldn't recommend a cold peel vinyl just because those tend to like really tug on them as you peel them. So any warm peel vinyl uh, that's nice and thick, like Strip Flock Pro, like Caesar Glitter, um, that's gonna work out really good. I do not recommend, if you're gonna get these fuzzy ones, I do not recommend Caesar Stretch uh, or just regular Easy Weed. It's just a little too thin, it's not gonna look good. Uh, Roman Cello, bro, I am doing good, thank you. I hope you guys are safe out there in the deep SoCal. We're technically all SoCal, but you're deep SoCal. Um, unrelated question, I don't mind at all. Where is the best location to press a, slurt, ugh, a short sleeve t-shirt? Um, so, and this is just me, everybody will have different trains of thought. For extra small through large t-shirts, I, and again, this is bad, I go, I use the finger method, so I'll put my graphics usually uh, between two and three fingers below the neck. Now, if it's a short graphic, like if it's just a thin piece of text, I might center it over the armpits. So if it's just one thin, long graphic, I'll probably center it over the armpits. So the t-shirt on the shirt, I'll have it centered over the armpits. Um, that's for a thin item, but for a taller or a circle graphic, I'll usually place it about two, three fingers below the chest. What you really wanna do, thank you so much, Alex, is get yourself a T-square it, all right? This is gonna help you, and we have tutorials on how to use these online. This is gonna help you keep your placement consistent straight and uh, even. So this is really cool. This is a, this is a tool for lining up t-shirts. Now we, we've heard mentioned in the group a couple times is that, you know, over time you'll, you'll train your eye and you don't need this one. That is very uh, true, very true. Uh, but how are you gonna train your eye, right? Some people have a gift for just keeping things centered really well. Um, but for the rest of us, you really want something to make sure that all your graphics are aligned perfectly straight the T padded, or the T squared, I'm sorry, it's two pieces, so you just place this down, and then you can use the, the crossbar to make sure everything is centered, especially if you have like an asymmetrical design. Uh, it's really key, but as I was saying, so I usually go about two, three fingers, which is about, about two, three inches, no, about two inches uh, below the neckline if it's like a longer portrait style graphic. And then for my extra large and double, triple, whatever, I'll usually go about four fingers below, which is about a full three and a half-ish, four inches. I don't have very big hands. Everybody's hands are different sizes and widths, so do that as you will, but you know, you definitely want to stay consistent with your placement. You don't want, if you're doing a, a line of t-shirts for people, you don't want some of the graphics to be up here, some down here, some in the middle, like, you don't want that. You want to have a consistent placement, and you know, my hand, it doesn't change size, so if I'm placing it, even if I was placing it a full hand width below the neck, as long as they're all like that, it should be okay. I think consistency is more important than the actual, what was it, two inches or three inches below the neck. As long as it's consistent, that's what's gonna look uh, better. Okay, any other questions here? Oh, dude, that's a great question. Uh, Anna's asking, can you sublimate on the white if you get the felt ones? I have no idea, but uh, I have another blank one here, so I'm actually gonna test this. I don't have anything to, to print with right now, so I'll have to test that on off camera. Um, but yeah, I'll be sure to comment back with a picture of how that turns out. That's a great question. Oh, <laughs> he says, Mohammed says, thanks, but I meant the, on the sleeve itself, sorry. Uh, if you're on a short sleeve t-shirt, what I'll do is I'll lay the t-shirt flat and I wish I had a blank, I don't have any blank. Alex, is there a blank t-shirt over there? No, huh? No, there's not. Okay, no worries. Um, what I'll do is I'll lay the t-shirt flat on the heat press um, usually they come folded with a crease already down the center of the sleeve. So if that crease is there, I'll use that as my center point. Um, and I'm usually going about two fingers above the, the hem of the sleeve. That's done all right with me so far. It really depends though. Ideally what you want to do is if you have um, somebody who wears a size medium or large t-shirt, have them put a t-shirt on and uh, get your transfer and like hold it up to their arm and measure it. That's really the best way to do it. And then just take note like, oh, okay, so the... The sleeve hit looks good when it's two inches above the sleeve. Some sleeves are longer, even if it's a short sleeve. So, you know, you, you gotta really just take all that into consideration. Different shirts have different lengths. Um, that's why it's important, I think, to settle on a t-shirt. Like, if you're gonna offer t-shirts, 
try to find a blank that you really like and stay with it because it'll make your sizing a whole lot uh, better and easier. All right, I think that's gonna do it for me today. It's good questions. Thank you guys so much for joining us for today's project. I had a lot of fun. Uh, I encourage you, go out there and see what kind of other cheap, fun stuff you can make, you can get uh, to make the holidays as fun as possible. I know a lot of us are stuck at home, we're staying safe, but at the same time, we're getting bored. Um, have a fun project with the kids. Have them pick up the, their own fonts. Who cares if they want like a Star Wars font or a crazy weird heavy metal font for their stockings? Have them go with it. Have some fun. Uh, I hope everybody out there is staying safe, staying healthy. And yeah, if you guys have any questions, maybe you're not watching this live, feel free to comment anyways. We'll be happy to answer any of your questions uh, on this project or any other projects. All right, that's gonna do it for me. Oh, last thing, if you have any uh, questions um, regarding anything um, like your HPN purchase or how to heat transfer stuff, you can actually message us for my expert help, heat.press slash support. Send us a message. We'll be happy to get back to you. Again, the Facebook group, heat.press slash FB group. It's a great place to get lots of cool info and show off your projects. If you guys are making anything like this, I'd love to see it. This is my old, I made this sweater like two or three years ago and I still wear it every Christmas. I love this sweater. If you have a cool Christmas sweater, I wanna see it. Uh, you can post it in the group, heat.press slash FB group. <sighs> Too much talking for me. I'm gonna go shut my mouth and get some work done. Uh, I hope you guys have a great and awesome day and we'll see you around. Adios.